your skin, that shit is popping, girl. Body on ten, damn, you got it, girl. You got a boss up, getting them checks, living your best, racks up. black females out here y'all don't understand the struggles of being a black man out here in america and not knowing whether or not you gonna make a home to your churn every night because of the police gunning you down but don't y'all be out here gunning each other now okay but we ain't talking about that hell don't y'all be rapping about killing each other in music we ain't talking about that either we can talk about killing each other in rap music but we don't like the police killing us stay on subject woman you brought up your kids. Tyrone, you don't even see your kids. And then, yeah, I be trying to see my kids. You know my baby mamas be tripping because I don't want to be with none of them, so they be holding my kids from me. You know that. Okay, but your baby mama saying you don't get them no child support either. Okay, but I still be going out my way to try to see them. They live five minutes from my house, Tyrone. That is out my way, woman. See, y'all, that's what we don't like y'all black women's mouths. Y'all run y'all mouth too much. Y'all always bringing up stuff that's irrelevant. Well, was you cheating on me, Irrelevant? I only cheated on you ten times. You act like I do it every day, bruh. See, that's why we date women of other races, man. Hey, booze, hey. It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Woman Exodus. How are you guys doing? Like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Please share. Please say what's up to me in the comment section. Say what's up to me in the chat. Hey, y'all in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Also, when you have a moment, please pause this video and follow the backup channel. It is called Lex X. That's L-E-X-E-X. -E -X. You can also find the link in the description below. Also, if you have any suggestions or any ideas for any new stories, feel free to share that to me to my Gmail. That is LexisExodusChannel at gmail.com. Also, shout out to my Patreon family. I love y'all. Y'all are so dope. Y'all always show up and show out and show support. Shout out to my Discord family. The Discord chat is always so lit. If you're interested in joining and checking out exclusive content, please, uh, you'll find the Patreon link in the description below. Lastly, y'all, before we get to it, please follow me on Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> I'm trying to get better about using different social media platforms to connect with you guys. I know everybody doesn't use YouTube. A lot of you guys love Facebook. A lot of you guys really enjoy TikTok. I do too. I'd be on their way too often. So please, once you have a moment, take a second and follow me on um, the other social media platforms. That's at Lexus Exodus on all other platforms. Arms. This is another installment of my series called the Blackistan Zoo, where we profile the dusty derelicts, crazy creatures, and animals in Blackistan. Tonight, I want to revisit your hypergamous male. Okay, so I've discussed the hypergamous dusty previously and decided to do a part two because black women have been taking L's lately left and right. I've been seeing videos of you guys tricking off on these nick nogs. So I want to revisit this and do a part two of your hypergamous nick nog. So let's quickly go through the profile of your hypergamous dusty. So this is a man who intentionally dates, marries, or establishes a sexual relationship with a woman who is out of his league financially, educationally, or economically. Okay, so these are your homosexuals. These are your male gold diggers who intentionally seek out women who will contribute to their lifestyle and who will take care of them. So again, tons of stories have gone viral lately illustrating this nonsense. So I wanted to revisit this because there's been a lot of learning examples in the media lately, especially social media, that really, really are telltales of why it is important to stay away from these testes, okay? So I want to get into this first example, which is a post that's recently gone viral of a hypergamous dusty who expected a woman to foot the bill on their first date. Okay, so I want to read this. So the caption says, my homegirl just texted me this. Why is dating like this? Okay, 
So the text says, LLL, am I being shallow if I don't pay this man $40? We went out last night to the place he wanted to go. I didn't want to go. So he said, come over here and we can drink and smoke hookah and no one has to spend no money. So I said, okay. So that was her first mistake, agreeing to this cheap ass date. I went over there. We had drinks and hookah. Then I said I was hungry. He said, okay. He drives us to the place. I said, I didn't want to go. He says, follow his lead, but the door person wouldn't let us in without paying. So he looked at me to pay the $25. Okay, that was mistake number two. You shouldn't have even brought your wallet with this fool. Okay, so she says, we sat down. I ordered my food. The music is loud. I don't know what he orders. I go to the bathroom, come back, and my wings are at the table. He ordered wings and a hookah. The bill comes, and I'm like, I didn't smoke no hookah. I didn't want it. He angrily pays the bill, which I was willing to pay for our food, but he pays. Then when we're in the car, says that the bill was $76, and he used his last to pay it, so could I cash app him 40 <sighs> And she's asking, am I being shallow if I don't pay him the $40? Is this for real, y'all? Or do y'all just be trolling me to go viral for, for clout? You know, I get stuff like this all the time. And then I wonder if it's real. Then I think back to my experiences in Blackistan. And I think back to what I've heard and what my homegirls have experienced. And I know that this is very real. Because this fool is upset over 40 damn dollars. And sis must be young. Because as soon as this nigga said... We can stay home and chill so we don't have to spend any money. I would have blocked him right there. Because if you can't afford a four for four, um, a two for 20 at Applebee's, then you can't afford to date, fool. You know, she's sitting here asking if she's being shallow. Y'all, we got to do emergency interventions for one another because the bar is set so damn low in Blackistan. It's in hell. Like, at the very least, this man didn't even offer a coffee date. He offered her right off the bat Netflix and chill because it's less expensive. Like, seriously, y'all, you should never have to touch your wallet when you're out on a date with a man, period. And if he can't afford it, then let him know, okay, it sounds like you have more pressing things to worry about. The fact that you can't afford 40 damn dollars for some hookah and some chicken wings. Y'all, okay, so let's keep going. I want to get into my next example of your hypergamous Dusty, where this big dummy is celebrating because his wife makes good money as a traveling nurse. And shout out to my good sis and the Patreon, Isha, who shared this with me. This is a hot ass mess. So let's watch this and then we will chat. <laughs> No monkey in the jungle, fly high like a sauna Bouncing off and I'm trying to weep and the corner Jumping in the water, trying to sleep across the water Got sea boys out, I got my big bad for Ronald Out, bag it, bag of money, knew I gotta have it Okay, let's play that back Because there were just captions So I'm gonna read the captions It says my wife just signed a contract For a traveling nurse position She's getting $133 an hour Where can I buy a helicopter? Are you not embarrassed, Dusty? This is embarrassing, like homegirl said. <laughs> he sit here pee popping, pussy popping, and twerking his bussy over his wife's income. And I would be so embarrassed if I was his spouse. I would be mortified because it's like, damn, it's bad enough that I already out earned you. I, I, I out earned your broke ass, but you want to broadcast this to the world too. You twerking. Doing a two-step because of my money that I make. A high-ass mess. Okay. So let's get into this next example of your hypergamous Dusty, where this woman gives her Nick Nog $10,000 for his birthday, y'all. So let's watch this. When your wife gives you $10,000 for your birthday. Okay, now you gotta pull up the happy birthday sign. Pull the happy birthday sign, Ron. Our regular season is just 15 days away. I got it. Look at this guy. Happy birthday. That's from Randall's penny. I wanna buy you a 
Because it looks like this is a spicy Latina doing this mess, like Paris says. <laughs> but it's like men who are men won't take money from you, ladies. You know, so I think that's the learning experience. That, that's the takeaway here. Good for her. She can keep on tricking off on this fool she wants to. But men who are men, who are masculine, they will not take money from you. And I remember, um, you know, my, my stepmom not knowing what to give my father for Christmas. So she gave him money. And he said, no, I can't take this. He refused. He said, no, I can't take this. You know, a gift is one thing, but giving him $10,000 is absolutely ridiculous. And here they got a whole damn newborn that she's holding, living in what looks like a trap house. And she giving him $10,000 cash. And she mentioned that it was something for something called Blue Moon. Do y'all have any idea what that is? I have no idea what that is. I even tried to Google it and I'm not quite sure. But based off these niggas' MOs, I wouldn't be surprised if it was rap related or if she was like giving him money for recording time at a recording studio or something. Something stupid. Because women love to hold these niggas down with their little struggle careers. Uh, side note, my, my cousin, speaking of that, how, you know, these fools will be ride or dies and will trick off on these fools and will sacrifice everything. My cousin got his baby mama to leave their 10 kids here in Ohio and convince her to up and move all the way to Cali so he can pursue a struggle rap career. And the nigga is about this age. He's probably about 40 years old too. Too damn old for that ish. Um, while she working a nine to five, but this is your hypergamous mail, y'all. Okay. Let's get into this next story that is so depressing of this big old dummy black woman who is tricking off of her hypergamous Dusty and has her paychecks direct deposited into this fool's account. You you can't make this stuff up, y'all. This And this is what I mean. We down bad. So let's watch this and then we'll chat. So we both pay bills, but he pays for all of them because um, my check direct deposits into his account. So he can like have all the money in one place and we can save and stuff. And he like has an investment that he invests our money into. Um, he gives me an allowance of a hundred dollars a week. Like if I need more, I can ask for more, but you know, normally it's just like a hundred dollars a week for like food and like random stuff I want to buy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We both pay for stuff, but you know, he handles all the money as the man should. I want to throw up, y'all. I want to throw up. What the fuck is this bullshit? What the hell is this bullshit? And we see this Dusty sitting next to her, smirking at her, giving her the side eye like, you big dummy. Because this is a hot ass mess. So she direct deposits her entire damn paycheck into this Dusty's account. And he gives her an allowance of a hundred damn dollars a week, y'all. A hundred dollars a week. <sighs> y'all, y'all not about to give me a heart attack today. I don't even know where to start with this mess. 
First off, I highly doubt that this girl's married. If they are, why do they have separate checking accounts? Wouldn't they have joint accounts? That would just make sense. Especially if they're merging their finances anyway. It's like, how are you going to have my paycheck deposited into your single individual account? Second off, she's talking about she puts her funds directly into his account because the man should be leading the finances. But here's my thing. If he wants to be head of household and control the finances like a traditional male would, he needs to be the breadwinner. Because in a traditional household, quote unquote, with traditional masculinity, where the man is the head and controls all the finances, he should be out working while you're home taking care of the family. So her dumb ass is out here bringing home the bacon and then turning around and cooking it too. Depositing the bacon into his account. And then he turn around and give her $100 a week. Like who the F lives off of $100 a week, y'all? Like seriously? My household is a household of three and I can spend $250 on groceries a week alone very easily. Y'all. Ladies, do not do this. This is a recipe for disaster. This girl is obviously very young, dumb, and naive. She got braces on. She looks very legal. She's really pretty, too. And she's subjecting herself to this mess. Once they break up, it's going to be all bad. Because she will very likely find out that this fool was spending all her money on some BS. I wouldn't be surprised if he was financing side chicks or something child but this is your hypergamous dusty because dusties have mastered hypergamy they've mastered being sugar babies and resting in their femininity better than we have hey 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 y'all it is lexus exodus leader of the black women exodus if you didn't know already black women are beautiful Black women are intelligent and incredible. Black women are phenomenal and make great wives and mothers. I want to speak to your manager. Black women should be respected and deserve to be loved. Hey, 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 hey. Shut the Black women deserve to be treated like human beings, at least. (laughs) Listen, guys, if you're like me, you are so tired of your favorite black female content creators getting harassed by the trolls, silenced on social media, and censored by YouTube. We work so hard to stand up for Black women, and although YouTube allows us to be regularly berated, ridiculed, and degraded by dusties every day on the platform, as soon as we say one word to clap back, we're threatened with channel violations and are told to be silent or we will have our platforms removed. The bias algorithms, inconsistently enforced policies, and persistent trolling on YouTube is unacceptable and needs to stop. If you agree, meet me over on my Patreon, where you will be able to access completely raw, unfiltered, exclusive Lexus Exodus content. You will be able to access uncut, uncensored, and ad-free content, two bonus videos a week, access to the private Discord community, and much, much more. So meet me over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash Lexus Exodus. The link is also in the description below. Shout out to my exes. Mm-hmm. Child. Okay. So let's get into this next story where this lady gets scammed out of $7,000 from a hypergamous Dusty. Y'all, we taking L's left and right. We taking L's, y'all. I don't know what's wrong with black women, but let's watch this and then we will chat. She was in it for love. He was very charming. But she says he was in it to steal. A social media love trick that costs this woman thousands of dollars. And the FBI says there's a reason why it's happening more often. I'm Justin Carter. This is TSR Investigates.
They meet people online, talk a good game, give you an illusion that they love you, but instead they're out there to manipulate you into giving them money or goods. The FBI says that romance scammers are extremely busy these days, all because of the pandemic. I just got a random friend request um, one day. She says she thought he was good looking. She accepted his friend request. His name was Michael Roy. After a while, you started to kind of like him, right? Yeah, after a few weeks um, of like kind of going back and forth, um, I think what sparked my interest was that um, he was very charming, um, or at least I thought that he was. For her safety, we're not revealing her name, but she does say that Michael Roy was in her DMs practically ready to settle down. And after weeks of messaging, they started calling each other babe even. He told her that he was from Boston, but sold iPhones for a living in different countries. He was in Dubai at the time. He told me that he was in a little bit of a crisis because he claimed that his credit card or his bank card that he used was frozen. This was at the top of 2020 when COVID-19 first started. And freezing his account, um, it left him in a bad position because he claimed that he only had a one, he had only purchased a one-way flight to Dubai. He hadn't purchased a return flight because he wasn't sure exactly when he was going to be coming back to the U.S. And so what did he ask you to do? So he started asking if I could, um, the, he first started asking if I could send him money for his hotel bill um, because he would have to pay his hotel bill before he could even leave Dubai. And then he was also asking if I could help with his um, return flight. A one-way flight to Boston turned into much more. He'd ask for eBay gift cards in $100 increments, gift cards to the Apple Store and Google Play, $300 a piece sometimes. He said that if I load the money onto a gift card, um, he was able to go somewhere and get cash for the money from the gift cards. You would just give him the gift card number? Um, I would scratch off the code on the back and give him the, the, the gift card code. She says she sent even more money when he allegedly broke his leg and she was sent this picture. Michael Roy in a hospital bed. It looks like a cartoon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like, obviously, you know, in the middle of the situation, I just thought it was him. But then looking back on it, I'm thinking like, this kind of does look fake. She says over a six month period, she spent $7,000 on gift cards. Day before he was supposed to leave for his flight. Um, I was sending him messages all through the, all throughout the day. He wasn't responding. I thought it was a little bit weird. Um, and then I would say maybe two days after he was supposed to already um, been back in the United States, the account was gone. It was completely disabled. The Instagram account he was using was at Roy Mikey 22. Now we searched for it. It is in fact gone. The alleged victim says that she found another Instagram account with the alleged scammer same face. He's an influencer with over 209,000 followers, but instead of Michael Roy, there's a different name listed on the profile. He's denied everything. I messaged that same account asking about these scam allegations. You can see he read the messages, but didn't respond. They come off as charming. They come off as, you know, very interested in you, very loving, but it's all, it's all their game. According to the FBI, online romance scams increased 27% during the pandemic, over $605 million in stolen money. The FBI says that these scammers, they tricked their victims into feeling bad for them, blaming the pandemic for their problems. The FBI says that these scammers are using the pandemic too as an excuse to not meet people in person. Here's FBI Special Agent Christine Benning. From what we can tell, these are, these are usually criminal organizations that work together, and once a victim becomes a victim in that they send money, they will oftentimes be placed on um, what's called a sucker list and their names and identities are shared with other criminals and they will be um, targeted for future recruitment. Some red flags to look out for. Be careful what you post and make public online. Also research the person's photo and profile using online searches to see if it's been duplicated. Beware of people who make excuses not to meet you too and never send money to anybody you've only communicated with online or by phone. Now I don't trust anybody behind their Instagram handles because everyone out here is lying. The woman says she did file a police report, but police can't really do anything because she does not have a valid address or phone number for 
for the alleged scammer. Now, we're also not showing his profile either because one, police can't prove that he's the one who actually scammed her. And two, he hasn't been charged for anything. Now, she has, though, filed a complaint with the FBI, something that you are encouraged to do. Their website to file these complaints, these internet crimes, is ic3.gov. For TSR Investigates, I'm Justin Carter. Yo, this don't make no sense. Like $7,000, y'all. She said this, Dusty, $7,000. Black women, we, if you don't want to divest, we need to start dating in the mammies at this point. Because they the niggas with the money. All this man had to do was send a few pictures, and she was like putty in his hands. Like, seriously? Mammy's down this bad. This man said the pic that the fool sent of him in a hospital looked like a damn cartoon. So it wasn't even, he wasn't even um, tricking her um, in a sophisticated manner. It was very elementary. He said it looked like a damn cartoon. Let's see if I can find the screenshot where he, <laughs> where he says this obviously edited photo of him in a damn hospital. Lord Jesus. Here it is. <laughs> This don't make no damn sense. This don't make no damn sense. So it's obviously edited, badly edited of a photo of this fool in a hospital. It's like, listen, hell, if it was me, I would actually check myself into the hospital just to make it look realistic. Told them I had a stomach ache or something. This fool didn't even try. He just badly added a Photoshop of his image in a hospital bed. And listen, I I don't understand how she got tricked out of $7,000, y'all. Like, I've loaned out $100 to a Nignog before back in Blackistan when I was young and dumb. But $7,000, girl, I bet you she has kids, too. So this was probably her, her stimmy money. This was probably her tax refund check for a nigga she never even met, y'all. Like, did y'all even FaceTime, girl? Like, I don't know if she just slow, stupid, or crazy. <sighs> Lo, Jesus. This is your hypergamous Dusty, though. Praying on unsuspecting women who will fall for this mess. Okay, so let's get into this next woman who buys her dude a damn car. So let's watch this, and then we will talk through it. The caption says, my wife surprised me with my dream car for my 29th birthday, 1969 Camaro. My wife surprised me with my dream car for my 29th birthday, 1969 Camaro. Dude, it's yours. I got the keys in my pocket. <laughs> what's up? Are you serious? <laughs> what do you mean? Are you for real, bro? Man. Oh, he just got a big old Kool-Aid smile. He got a big old Kool-Aid smile. He like, oh, this stupid bitch. She just bought me a car so I can go ahead and cheat on her with it. Y'all, do y'all do this stupid crap like this? Like Tabitha Brown, who retired her husband, treating them like children, buying them cars and houses and ish, giving them money, and then get surprised when they turn around and call you masculine. It's like, this is what the men are supposed to do. Men are supposed to protect, provide, and problem solve. They're supposed to provide the provisions. Here this woman is buying his full car and recording him crying like a little bit. A mess. Okay, so I want to get into this last example of your hypergamous Dusty, where this woman pays off her Nignog student loans. Child. Okay. Let's watch this, and then we will chat. Oh, 
I just want to throw up. Like, Black women, why do we got to do this crap? Why do we have to do this? Because y'all will sit here and mule, work yourself to death, slaving, protecting, and providing. All to buy houses and cars and paying off student loan debt for these niggas. And guess what you get in return? You do all that just for them to turn around and call you masculine and say you're emasculating. You won't let them be a man. And quick story for those of you who are new to this platform. I talk about how my husband did this for me and paid off my student loans. He wrote a check to pay off my student loans a few years back. But he's a man. Men pride themselves on taking care of their families, not the other way around. I know these fools are broke that you like to mess with. They don't know how to build. They don't know how to provide or collect assets. They don't know how to take care of themselves. But that don't mean you turn around and do it for them. This is so embarrassing. And her caption says, I'm working hard to set our family up for a great future. Fool, he's supposed to be doing that. Y'all make me so angry. And these men that y'all are taking care of, they build resentment because now he feel like a little bitch because he can't provide for his family. Stop doing that. Like y'all are castrating these fools. Just treating them like pretty, pretty princesses. They ain't got to do nothing but slang team. And I understand y'all have good intentions, y'all, but you need to uh, make men be men. Their sole purpose is to protect and provide and to problem solve, not for them to find women who will do it for them. <sighs> I cannot. We are down bad, Black women. We was just taking L's left and right, effing with these dusties. Like, for real, y'all? Like my good sis said in the Discord, Brooklyn Butter, shout out to you, sis. We just content with being trash receptacles at this point. And just taking anything, anything to be with a man. Anything. The bar set in hell. You should never be tricking off on no dude. We content with just accepting scraps. The scraps that these niggas throw at us. Y'all don't require them to bring anything to the table. Just headaches and hard dicks. That's it. Do better, y'all. And divest. Only engage in relationships that are reciprocal. Because this is just embarrassing. All right, that's all I got. Until next time, see you guys. Bye. If y'all come across a red iPhone, can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.